morning, friends. Welcome back to She's At It Again. We are going to be making something today I happened to invent a couple of weeks ago, just out of necessity. We had guests coming over, and I had some things made, but at the last minute, I decided to make a dessert, and this is what I came up with. But I was pleasantly surprised because this can not only be a dip for apples, but it can also be made into just a fudge and eat it by itself. And when I say fudge, I only mean it's like the soft consistency of fudge, but I can think of so many things to do with this. This is kind of fun. It only has five ingredients, so let's go over there and I'm gonna show you exactly what they are and how to put it together. You're not gonna believe how easy this is. I bet you have the things in your kitchen right now, so let's go. All right, the first thing we're gonna need is two ounces of cream cheese, and this is just what I have left from using some the other day. I'm gonna put it in the bowl. And I like to scrape off all the residue from this wrapper. Now this is, has been softening for uh, probably maybe an hour and a half. So just get it to room temperature. And what I mean by that is soft where I can push the spatula down in it and it makes an indention. You don't want it to be hard at all. Next thing we're gonna need is teaspoon of cinnamon and I know that sounds like a lot for this little amount but it does have a pretty strong cinnamon flavor to it and if you have someone who has an allergy to cinnamon feel free to use cardamom or allspice as a replacement for that but you don't want to use quite as much allspice it's a little strong next thing we're going to need is an eighth of a teaspoon of salt now i use unsalted peanut butter in this so that's why i'm using the eighth of a teaspoon of salt but if your peanut butter has salt in it if it has very much you might want to back off the salt you can always add more later but you can't add less and the peanut butter is very important this does not have any added sugar to it at all it has honey in it as a sweetener but no sugar but this is what I'm using. And make sure you find a peanut butter. This is organic peanut butter that just says roasted organic peanuts, and that's all, or either roasted organic peanuts and sea salt. Don't get the kind with sugar in it. <laughs> it it kind of it just, uh, there's really no need to make this if you're gonna have <laughs> the one with sugar. It's gonna be sweetened already. All right. But we're trying to make better choices with this, so this is what we're doing. Now, if you know anything about organic peanut butter, it's runny. It's not the thick, creamy kind with the stabilizers in it, so this is kind of pourable. We're going to add a fourth of a cup of peanut butter to this. Now, this is just creamy peanut butter. You can have the chunky if you want, totally fine. But again, the most important thing is it does not have added sugar in it. And when you buy the organic peanut butter, you're gonna to have to stir it up really well because the oil has come to the top of it, the solids have settled to the bottom, so that's the biggest chore you get when you buy the organic peanut butter. But trust me, it's worth it. It's just like putting peanuts in your mouth. There's no sweeteners to it. There's no stabilizers to it. There's no preservatives in it. It's just fabulous peanut butter. Okay, so again, a fourth of a cup. We got that cleaned out pretty good. And then the last thing we're gonna add is a tablespoon of honey, but I'm gonna take the residue of the peanut butter around this because it's oily. I'm gonna coat my spoon because I don't want the honey all stuck to the spoon. On the edge and on the inside. All right, this is raw and unfiltered honey and just one tablespoon of honey. Now, when I made this the first time, I was just throwing things in and then I, later on that night, I got to thinking, you know what? I should share that with my friends on YouTube, but I don't, I don't remember how much stuff I put in there. So I just started guessing at it, but I remade the recipe the other day and wrote down what I thought I used and I was pretty close. So I did it again, 
and this is what it tasted like. Now, I don't know what chemical reaction or what it is, what science takes place. I'm not that smart, but something happens in this, and this is not This is not as liquidy as each of these ingredients are. It may, be the, it may be the cinnamon that soaks up all the moisture. I don't know, but this becomes the consistency of a soft fudge. Now, I'm going to show you this in just a minute. So much so that it pulls away from the edge of the bowl. Now, what I thought about, I told my husband about this later, and he just kind of looked at me like he didn't understand completely what I was talking about, but as you know, I'm a big fan of carob powder being used in place of cocoa powder because there's so many people who are allergic to cocoa, but carob powder actually has a hint of a sweetness to it, so it's not, um, it's not astringent like chocolate is. It's just smooth and really, really nice, but because this holds together so well in a solid form, I thought it'd be kind of cool to roll these in tiny little truffle size shapes and just roll it in some dry carob powder. That way you would have the chocolate flavor along with the peanut butter. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of chocolate and peanut butter together. I'm not, I'm probably the only person on the earth that doesn't like it together or just not a fan of it. It's not that I wouldn't eat it if I had to, but it's not my favorite. But I thought that might lend a nice uh, flavor to it. And other than that, you would have a really neat, kind of a truffle-like dessert with absolutely no processed sugar in it. How cool is that? Okay, so here's what's happening in here. The oil from the peanut butter is allowing it to release from the side of the bowl. And this is the consistency of, let me think, I would say, a really good quality soft play-doh. <laughs> you ever seen a bad quality play-doh? But that's what this reminds me of. Now I'll take this and put it in a small container. This only makes a little bit over half a cup of this whatever we wind up calling it. I'm trying not to add too many names to it. I don't want to call it like cream cheese, peanut butter, honey, no processed sugar, something. I just want to call it something fun so I can get it on the title. But whatever this is, I'm going to put it in a little container. But you could always, always make more by just, you know, multiplying the ingredients. Okay, so here's what we have. I can even put it on the spatula and it'll hold. How fun is that? And let me tell you, this is as good as it looks, I promise you. I have some apple slices over here, and I bought some Cosmic Crisp apple slices, and I could take this, take a little bit of that, and put on there. Now that's the goods right there. This. Mm. That's so good. Maybe the flavor of Let's just go with a peanut butter cheesecake with a slice of cold, fresh, crisp apple on it. There we go. We have it named. But that's not really the name of it. But I would encourage you to give this a try. If you have someone who has a peanut allergy, feel free to use almond butter. I'm sure it'll have the same um, texture to it. A little bit of a taste difference, but you don't want to kill anybody in the process. You just want people to enjoy what you're making. So... Anyway, this is our newest dessert, invented by accident, but I'm glad I did, and we thank you for joining us. The recipe will be in the description of this video, and we look forward to sharing something again with you real soon. Bye, guys.